Hello and welcome to another episode in the Learning to Fly with Grant Francis and Go Fly series. Today we're looking at navigation, so you're going to need a few tools for this one. Uh, the first, of course, is a chart. It's a chart, not a map. Uh, you're also going to need something to draw some circles with, a compass, you are going to need a vlog, a ruler, uh, various pens, and of course a CRP1 flight computer to help you with your calculations. You could of course do it without if you're Albert Einstein. Let's see how this goes. So in order to save some time in the video, I've gone ahead and I've marked on our track, where we're heading, where we're going. So we're leaving Alderbury, we're heading down to Dorchester, coming from Dorchester up to Gillingham, leaving Gillingham, and we're heading down towards Downton, and we'll visually fly from Downton back to Waterbury and um, Old Sarum again as well. I've just moved it down to Downton to avoid the, the mats of, of Boscombe Down and some of the danger zones and things. So, you then go over to your vlog to fill out. Now, I can see I've already done this, but I'm just gonna go through what we've done here and how we got to these numbers. We're going from Alderbury to Dorchester, Dorchester to Gillingham, Gillingham to Downton. Our safe altitude is 2,300 feet. We get this number from, from these purple numbers here, these large numbers. So we've got one, three written here, we've got one, three here. So we're basically flying in four of these um, squares or rectangles on the chart and each of the rectangles has got a different number in it based on the safe minimum height. So for down here for example is is one zero one thousand. So we take the the numbers and we add a thousand feet for safety. Planned altitude, uh, we're looking at three thousand seven hundred feet because that brings us in nicely underneath all of the the CTAs, the control areas. You can see there's one here at flight level one three five one thousand. Uh, sorry, thirteen thousand five hundred feet. We're not going to get that high, we don't need to be that high. And it also keeps us out of trouble uh, with other aircraft as well, because most people tend to fly an even number. Let's fly an odd number, 3,700. Our true airspeed is going to be 90 knots. It's quite a comfortable airspeed for the, for the PA-28. And our track, I worked out with the compass to show us which direction we're going according to the map. Now, of course, wind is going to have a, uh, an effect on our track so we need to work out what our heading should be. So we take the wind uh, using the report we took from the Met Office so we're flying in between these two um, report areas so at two or three thousand feet it's going to be 160 degrees at 10 knots or 110 degrees at 10 knots so let's just take an average of those and let's say that it's 135 at 10 knots from that, we can then work out what our heading true is. Now, I've worked out here that we've got a heading true of uh, 226. So to do that, perhaps if you have it out the right way, um, the first thing we do is mark in our wind direction. So at 135, let's go 135. And we mark on a line at 10 knots from the center point, 10 knots with a T at the top, so we know that We've got a 10 knot wind. We can then plot our track true. So 232, so 232 degrees. Let's turn that around to 2312. And we put the T on the TAS. And it's, it's nicely lined up there already, look. So our true airspeed is 90 on this arc. And we can see that there's a deviation of about eight degrees. Two, four, six, eight. Eight degree deviation there and our airspeed remains about the same. So that deviation, we need to work in which direction we need to we need to turn. So going back to the chart, we know that we've got a, a 135 degree wind. So that's actually southeast. So that's coming from down here and it's heading, the wind is going in this direction. We're heading in this direction. So it's gonna push us towards our right. So in order to compensate for that, we need to fly slightly towards the left. So we reduce the numbers because obviously as you're as you're looking at a compass you know we use this as an example it's zero degrees we need to reduce our numbers to turn around to the left so we're going to take off eight degrees from 232 leaving us 226 our heading magnetic is 227 because in this portion of the uk we add one degree 
to our true heading to get the true magnetic heading. Our ground speed we've worked out is 90. We worked that out from the flight computer. And now what we need to do is work out how long it's going to take us to fly the first leg. Now we've worked out the distance, of course, because we've used our ruler with a 1 to 500,000 scale. We've measured it, and it's given us 33 nautical miles. To work the time out, here it is, really simple. We take the other side of the CRP1, put the marker on the 90, and we spin it around. Oh, my screw's just fallen out of the computer. I'll fix that in a minute. To 33, and it works out at about 21 miles. It really is simple. So you start on the on the 90, oh, moved it because the screw's fallen out, 90 there, and we can follow the dial round to 33, which gives us about 21 minutes. 21 minutes, we mark it in there. That's it, that is navigation. Let's see if it works. Rather than bore you with an entire film of the flight, let's speed the flight up and we'll take a look at the map versus the GPS overlay to see if it works. There we go then, my first navigation. Not perfect, but the GPS track does kind of follow the same triangles we drew on the chart uh, for, our, for our track on there. So actually I'm quite happy with that. Practice makes perfect, and that's what flying lessons are all about. Learning how to be a good pilot. The more I do it, the better it's gonna become. Um, the landing, however, now that was interesting. If you're a bit squeamish, look away now because it was a 16 knot crosswind exactly 90 degrees to the runway and it got a bit hairy. Check this out. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to find out about how to become a pilot yourself or just take on one of the flying experiences on offer, go to goflyuk.com. You can follow GoFly on all of your usual social media outlets. Just search for GoFly UK. And you can keep up to date with the video podcasts, the audio podcasts, and of course my blog as well at flyinglessons.tv. I'll see you in the next update.